welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another currently inked video, and this is the currently inked video for the 24th of June 2019. And I have a number of pens here that are already inked up and I've been using in this past week. So I thought it would be a good idea just to go through these one by one, and then we'll do a writing sample. So, from left to right, we have the Visconti Opera Master Clear Demo, the Visconti Opera Master Corvina, the Visconti Opera Master Stardust, a Visconti Ducali Palazzo di Sassuolo, a Mont Blanc Le Grand 146, a Pelican M800 Renaissance Brown, a Leonardo Officina Italiana Memento Zero in the Positano Blue, an Edison Collier in the Persimmon Swirl, an Edison Collier in the Blue Steel, and an Edison Perlet in the Lapis Blue. So let's take a look at these pens uh, one by one. So, so this is the Visconti Opera Master Clear Demo, and it's a really lovely pen. I originally wanted a Visconti Homo Sapiens uh, in this same material, but unfortunately I was unable to pick one up brand new at the time. I, I've had a number of offers more recently, and I've turned them down because they were used pens, and for me, uh, many of them actually had issues with the ink windows, and, and that was something on the Homo Sapiens, the earlier models, that there were more issues with. But this is... Uh, an Opera Master version, and you can see here, hopefully, it's number 662 of 888, but it is a, a much larger version and more weightier version, and I do like it. I, I do like this material that is here. It's a lot of blue and green sort of ribbon-type swirls going on there in the material, and hopefully you can see that here on camera, that it really... You can, you can get to see most of the ink that's in there, and I have an orange ink in there at the moment, and that's Pilot of Washizuku Yuyaki. But you can see here, it's actually quite a nice sort of demonstrator here. So you can see here, uh, there is a little bit of staining that does happen along these internal threads on the pen, but for me, like this is a, a lovely pen, and more importantly, it actually writes well. Uh, it has a medium nib, and I'll show you that here. It is a 23 cap palladium medium nib. You can see there, and, and that writes very nicely. It's got a quite quite a bit of a bounce to it. You can also see here, just, just here is the ink window, uh, and that's the double reservoir, which the Visconti Opera Masters have. And you can see in the size of my hand that this is actually a really nice weight. Now, a lot of people actually do say to me, sort of like they're concerned about these metal sections. Now, I don't find these Opera Masters slippery at all. The only Viscontis I have had experience with where I have found that they have been more slippery are the Van Goghs. And I think it's mostly because of this like concave sort of section here. So your fingers can only slip so far and, and then they don't slip any further. So for me, I find that this is very good. Now, Obviously, the chrome is a little bit of a finger magnet, so uh, you do need to keep polishing this, and, and likewise here as well. So, unfortunately, it's something to bear in mind, but I do like this pen. And I do like Opera Masters a lot, and I, I have quite a few of them as well. I think it's about eight or nine now I have. Then we have this one, and this is a pen that I picked up about a year ago, and this is uh, a Truffet uh, exclusive, and this is the Visconti Opera Master Corvina. And again, uh, it's a beautiful material, and it came. there were two pens that came out at the same time. There was this pen, and then there was this one, which was a Stardust. But this is a Corvina. I actually like the Stardust a little bit more. But I'm actually coming more round to the Corvina. I'm actually starting to like the Corvina a little bit more. And you can see here that the, the material is quite stunning here. 
that it really is sort of like a popcorn galaxy effect going on there. It is an Opera Master. It does have the double reservoir in it. It does have a very large ink capacity. In terms of the nib, it has a 23 carat palladium stub nib. And that is a quite a juicy wet nib. Uh, it's not the most juiciest nib that I have. Uh, you can also see the ink window here as well, and, and that's full up. Uh, and that's uh, inked up with the Visconti Bordeaux. But again, you can see here, uh, in terms of the size of my hand, this is actually a really nice size for me anyway. Uh, you can post these caps. Personally, I don't normally post them because they become a, a little bit of a wand. And, and I find this with most of my pens because most of my pens are not short pens. There are only a few pens that I do have short. For instance, this one here. And that is an Edison Collier. And we'll get to that in a little bit. So here is the other one, and this is the Visconti Opera Master Stardust. And as I mentioned, I did like this one more, although the Corvina is is coming through to me a little bit more in terms of how I like it. But this is an absolute beauty, a galaxy effect. And I think the other thing that actually makes this pen really stand out is the ruthenium trims that we have going on here on the pen. So it, it's a black trim. Uh, you can see here, even the end cap here is black as well. So it's actually quite a nice pen. The nib is, again, a 23 cap palladium nib. But this is, again, a stub nib. So it's a 1.3 millimeter stub. But again, it's a ruthenium trimmed nib. And again, I like that, especially with the ruthenium trim going on here, even on the section. You also have the ink window here, and again, this is inked up with Visconti Bordeaux, which is the ink that it actually came with. And to be honest, I actually prefer having those inks in here. Although, I, with this one, because it's a darker red, I will probably start looking at putting other ink into this pen soon. But uh, for the time being, I still have Visconti Bordeaux in there. But again, it's a really nice size pen for me. You can post it, but again, it becomes a little bit of a mammoth pen, so I tend not to post these pens. It also becomes very back-weighted as well, because there's a lot of weight in this cap. And then we have the Visconti Ducali Palazzo di Sassuolo, and this is a pen that uh, I featured again, I think, in uh, my previously currently inked video. Uh, but this is a pen that I've been writing a lot with, and I've I've not had this inked up for a long time. It has an 18 karat gold medium nib there, and it's a very bouncy nib for me. So this is a nib that I really do like writing with. You can see here in the size of my hand, it's actually a, quite a good size. You can post the cap. Uh, it's maybe just slightly back weighted, but not much. Like if you're going to be writing like this, you're probably not going to feel it. It's only if you're holding the pen almost horizontal that you're going to feel it. But again, I don't post this. Uh, just like the, the Opera Masters, this is a PowerVac filler as well. But you can see here the Palace or Palazio and it's engraved onto the body here and I have this inked up with a lovely orange ink and this is one of my favorite orange inks so for me this is a beautiful pen and you can see here this this material really is quite stunning so you can see why I purchased this pen and, and actually the <laughs> the strange thing about this pen was I I was uh, uh, wanting to buy this pen and it was on a buy now, but it was a little bit too high. And I spoke to Chris at Truffet, and uh, uh, at, at that point, uh, he'd, he'd just put it up onto auction. And I thought, oh, damn. Uh, I really didn't want to do, do an auction, because I know a lot of auctions can go quite high. And this one was going quite high. Uh, but in the end, I managed to uh, stay up very late. I think it was at 2 a.m. in the morning, on a Saturday morning. And I managed to secure this pen on auction. And I still got it for what was a very, very good price, considering the MSRP on this pen. So. I'm glad that I won that pen. Uh, I wish it hadn't gone to auction. It, it actually cost me a little bit more than I would have done if I probably had bought it on the buy now, I think, long term. But, but at the end of the day, it was a really nice pen. And then 
I don't normally do Mont Blancs much. This is a Mont Blanc 146 or a Mont Blanc Le Grand. And the reason why I don't do Mont Blancs a lot is that I'm just not into these plain black pens. And I understand a lot of people are, especially if you're using your pens at work. You don't necessarily want something that's a little bit too flashy. But likewise, you might want a little bit of a, a status symbol. And Mont Blanc is certainly considered a status symbol in the pen world. Now, in terms of the nib on this one, I so I wanted to try some Mont Blancs. I bought a couple. I bought a 149, but this is the 146 model. And the reason why I got this is it's a double broad nib and I didn't have a double broad nib in my collection. So I wanted to try out a double broad. I had the option of buying an oblique double broad and I wasn't sure if I really wanted an oblique double broad and I, in the end I passed on that and I went for this double broad instead. It's a nice pen and it's a pen that I'm actually uh, going to be selling because it as I said, I just don't do black pens. And for me, I this pen is just on a little bit on the short side. And of course, you can post the cap. But for me, I just it, I don't normally post my caps that often. Uh, it's a piston filling pen. Uh, and it's, it's a good writer. It's a double board. You could actually turn this nib into an architect if you wanted to. Uh, but for me, again, I just... It's not a pen that... I typically write a lot with but I decided to ink it back up and give it another try and see if I wanted to keep it and I've decided now that I'm I'm going to probably let the pen go so if if you are interested in a 146 especially with a double broad nib uh check out my website I'll put the link below here penultimatedave.com uh there's a list there of pens that uh, I am selling uh that I still have available to purchase if you want one of those just send me a message and I'm sure we can do some kind of deal and another pen that I inked up and uh, I I like a lot, but I've got another similar pen. This is the Pelican M800 Renaissance Brown. And I got, uh, probably I think it was about six months later, a uh, um, Grand Place. And I actually like that one a little bit more. Uh, so, so this one, I originally had a medium nib on. Uh, I've actually changed it to a broad nib. Uh, but I have both nibs, so uh, I'm going to set it with either the medium or the broad, depending on what anybody wants on it. But but this, you see that material is quite stunning. Uh, it was a limited edition uh, model, and you can see there it's got the, the broad nib on there. But again, I've got a medium nib, so I can unscrew that nib and swap the nibs over. Uh, I tend to prefer broad nibs on these Pelican M800s. I find the nibs are actually, although being an 18 karat gold nib, I find that they are quite firm. Uh, so, uh, and and I find that they, they tend not to be as wet or as wide as, say, my Visconti. So, the medium nib for me, I felt wrote more like a fine nib, but that's because a medium nib on a Visconti actually feels more, and writes more like a broad nib. Uh, but uh, like I think in terms of uh, consistency, the Pelican nibs write very well, very consistent, and a medium nib is like a Western medium, and a broad nib is like a Western broad. So um, it's just what I'm used to having more Viscontis. But you can see here the size of my hand. You can post this cap as well and it actually posts very well. It's not back weighted because the cap is very light, but you can also see here the, the translucent sort of going on here in the body uh, or in, in the cap there is, is quite, quite lovely. Um, so like if I sort of move my hand, like you might just see a little bit here, um, but it's actually, for instance, if I try and do this, you'll see that there is quite a bit of translucent going on here so it's actually quite a, quite a nice sort of material and it's a material that I do like but I've just not been riding with a lot of my Pelicans lately and uh, although I do like the Pelican M800s I do feel that they are the right size I really do think that um, I've got another similar one which is the Grand Place and for me 
I just find that that, that um, material actually works better for me. So again, I inked this up and I, I decided I would write with it and I decided sort of I'm going to let that one go as well. So I'm going to sell that one uh, from my collection. So again, if you're interested in that, just let me know. Then we have the uh, Leonardo Momento Zero Positano Blue. And this is a really lovely material. It's, it's almost like a Van Gogh type swirl art sort of uh, effect going on there in the body. Um, and this is one of the Leonardo Officina Italiana Memento Zero models. Uh, it's quite a nice model. It's a cartridge converter. Comes with a steel nib. I have a broad nib on here. Now, I did have problems initially with uh, the Leonardo nibs and Salvatore uh, replaced the nibs for me and these broad nibs actually write quite nicely. No baby's bottom on them whatsoever. So I'm going to be selling this one as well. Uh, I've got a, a number of um, Leonardo's. I sold the horn recently. Uh, I have um, the Hawaii that I'm going to keep for the time being and then I also have the Mediterraneo which is a celluloid with the uh, piston filler and it's the 18 gold, 18 karat gold nib. This is a steel nib and it's a cartridge converter. So this is actually a lot cheaper and I, I decided that I will look to sell that pen as well. And then again, I'm going to be selling these three pens here, and uh, I've inked these up. Again, just to write with them really one last time, just make sure that I'm making that decision to sell these pens. So this is the Editon Collier, and it's a persimmon swirl, and it's, it is a really stunning orange material or persimmon uh, colour with with the, the swirls going on there, lots of chatoyance going on there in the cap. And I really do like this pen. I like the size. Uh, the weight, it's very uh, lightweight. You cannot post these caps, unfortunately. They will not stay on there. Uh, and for me, I, I just find that although I like the size of the pen, I, I'm used to pens with a, a wider uh, or more girthier section and slightly longer here in terms of the pen. Uh, it comes with a steel nib. Now this is a medium nib. I, I have a number of uh, uh, replacement nibs in the 1.5mm stub as well. So I can offer this pen either with a medium nib or a 1.5mm stub. Uh, but again, I, this pen writes really well. But it's just one of these pens that I'm just re-evaluating in my collection and I decided that I would sell. And likewise, the same with the uh, another Edison Collier. And this is the blue steel. And I do love this blue steel material. I love that chatoyance that's going on there in the body. It's actually really quite captivating. Uh, but again, it's it's just another one of these pens. That I'm just not writing with them a lot. And I need to be writing with my pens. And I've come to this conclusion that at the end of the day, if I can't write with all of the pens, I'm not a collector. So I either have to really change to becoming a collector, and I don't see the point in collecting pens I'm not going to write with. So I either have to write with them, and it's becoming more difficult to write with them, so I'm thinking, well, I might as well sell them and maybe make way for some other pens that I will write more with. Or maybe not even. Who knows? But again, this comes with a 1.5mm stub. Uh, I can swap that out for a medium nib as well if you want a medium nib. It's a steel nib. Uh, but these are Yovo nibs, so they are pretty uh, standard in terms of um, sort of the the quality uh, and uh, writing experience that you get there. Um, they, they're very consistent. And then there's this little one, and this is the Edison Perlette in the lapis blue. And I really bought this pen, I, I ummed and ahed about this, and I, I bought it because of this lovely lapis blue that's going on there. And I knew that it was going end of life as well. So I decided at that point, in terms of the material, the colour, that I would get this pen. I hadn't realised how small the pen was in terms of, you can see here, the section is very, very small. So if I zoom in, uh, I realised it had a number 5 nib on it uh, and not a number 6 nib. So I knew that that was going to be smaller. And that actually did sort of concern me a bit because I I didn't 
I, I prefer the larger nibs but that section is very very small or very thin um, for me and then the actual size of the pen you can see here is actually quite short you can post the cap and it's perfectly fine but again for me it's just one of these pens where I don't write with enough and uh, I've decided I've not written with this in I think 18 months on average um, for a considerable amount of time I've had it inked up uh, and I've done a little bit of writing with it but nothing majorly so I decided again this is going to be a pen that I am going to sell so there you have it that's that's the uh, pens I have currently inked for this week I think let's go and do a writing sample now Okay, so the first pen we have uh, here is uh, a Visconti, so let's do the ink swatch. And this is an ink, an orange ink that I've actually liked a lot, but I don't use a lot. So I need to really use this ink a lot more. Uh, so this is the Visconti, and it's the opera master and uh, it's a um, medium nib and it's a 23 carat palladium nib and the ink that I have inked up here at the moment is pilot Iroshizuku and it's Yuyaki and this used to be one of my go-to orange inks but it's an orange ink that I just don't use enough of lately uh, I think because I've switched to a few other orange inks I like a little bit more but uh, I need to get back into using this ink a lot more so that's why I have it inked up and then we have the uh, another Visconti here so we'll do an ink swatch As you can see here, this is a much wetter and wider nib. And this is the Visconti. And again, it's an Opera Master. And it's a 1.3 millimeter stub, 23 cap palladium nib. And the ink in here is the ink that actually came with the pen which is Visconti Bordeaux. Now, I'm actually still unsure if this is Bordeaux or Burgundy. If you look online, some people say it's Bordeaux, some people say it's Burgundy. Uh, I tend to call it more Bordeaux. Uh, however, in my ink uh, spreadsheet, my ink database, I actually have it listed as Burgundy. I think I'm going to go and uh, update that because uh, that uh, I think Bordeaux is more of the colour I would say than, than a burgundy but it's I guess at the end of the day it's it's very close and then we have again another Visconti and this is another Opera Master so again this is a very wet nib and a very wide nib as you can see so this is a Visconti Opera Master And again, it's a 1.3 millimeter stub, and it's a 23 carat palladium nib. And again, the ink in here, because it came with the same ink, is Visconti Bordeaux. Uh, if you have any suggestions on a really dark red ink, uh, if I have it in my collection, then maybe I will uh, ink that up, because I really want a more darker uh, red ink to go with this pen and I'm thinking maybe something like Oxblood, Diamine Oxblood or something along those lines but I'm not sure and then the next pen we have again is another Visconti and this is one of my favorites we'll do an ink swatch and this isn't as wet a nib and it's actually just drying out so let me just open up and prime that there you go 
I actually had the uh, power vac knob screwed down so I've just opened that up um, and the this is the Visconti and it's the Ducali uh, Palazzo di Sassuolo now I may have actually spelt that wrong uh, I can never quite remember if Palazzo is two L's or one L and whether or not that's the A or the U and the correct way. Now, this is an 18 karat gold nib, um, but it's a uh, let's do a medium nib first and it's 18 karat gold. And the ink in here is an ink, and this is an orange ink that I love a lot. This is Sailor gentle apricot or apricot and if you can't get that try kin makusai because kin makusai is very very close it's almost indistinguishable uh, between that and sailor gentle orange or sorry sailor gentle apricot <laughs> they're both orange inks and then we have the mont blanc le grand 146 so we'll do an ink swatch on this and you see it's quite a wide nib there so this is the Mont Blanc uh, and it's the Le Grand or the, the 146 and it's a double board and it's a 18 carat gold nib now it does have a little bit of a uh, baby's bottom on it so it does hard start now and again depending on the paper that I use it on some paper like Rhodia can actually give more hard starts and that's typically when you do have baby's bottom or when a nib is more over polished um, but I do like the, the line variation that you get on this and it, the ink in here is just Lamy Blue. Uh, I was going to put a Mont Blanc Blue in here but uh, I decided I would uh, stick with Lamy Blue because I do like that Lamy Blue ink a lot. And then we have uh, a Pelican and this one has the board nib in and you can see why because I like wet nibs and this is a wet nib so for me I find this is really good so this is the Pelican and it's the M800 Renaissance uh, brown and it's a broad nib and an 18 karat gold nib and then the ink in here is one of my more favourite brown inks. I have a number, but but uh, this one is uh, Ackerman SBRE Brown. And people ask me why do I like this ink, and it's partly because it's a very light orangey brown ink uh, for me. So it's a brighter brown ink, and. I'm not one to normally go for the really dark brown ink, so that's really one of the reasons why I like that ink. And then there's also another one of my favourites is Diamine Ochre, uh, which is very, very close to that, uh, if not almost identical. And um, Mont Blanc Toffee Brown, although that's a much darker brown. Um, I do like um, uh, Robert... Oster Cafe Crema as well. That's another brown ink that is one of my favourites. Then we have the Leonardo, and we'll do another ink swatch here. You can see here this this nib is super super wet. So this is the. Leonardo, I'm not going to write it out completely. Uh, Leonardo, um, well, should we? Uh, I could do, uh, I'll, I'll just call it the Positano, Positano Blue. 
otherwise I'm going to run out of space. Uh, and it's a um, broad nib and uh, it's a steel nib. So uh, from a he, this, this is a very wet writer. It writes very nicely. Uh, now the ink in here that I have inked up at the moment is, and I'm just having a look, it's uh, Robert Oster and it's uh, Blue Water Ice. But I, I do like that ink and I do like how, how wet that nib writes. Okay, and then we have an Edison Collier. So this is the narrower nib, so this is the medium nib. And I find this is a very dirty orange. And I was actually talking to a friend at our recent pen club, um, and we we both like we both guessed. Like, it's, he asked me what ink I had in here because he he was writing with this, and at the same time we we both said orange Indian, which was the correct ink. But at the same time, we both said we love this ink because, and I said it's quite a dry ink, and he said it's quite a wet ink. So I think it depends on which pen you put it in. I, I normally find this is a drier orange, so I I do find that it's it's a much drier ink. So this is an Edison Collier or Collier and it's the persimmon swirl. And it's not a super dry ink. Uh, it's a medium nib and it's a steel nib. You can see here it is still fairly wet but it's a lot drier I would say than a lot of the nibs and a lot of the inks that I'm used to. So so this is a J. Herban if you hadn't already guessed it and it's orange Indian or Indian and this was one of my early orange inks and I just fell out of love very quickly with the ink because I found in a number of pens I put it in it was a very dry writing ink uh, and it was a, a muddy orange or a dirty orange and just really didn't seem like a white orange but I decided to ink it up in this pen. And then we have another Edison here and this has a wider nib, it's a stub nib so I'm actually going to do this because it's a 1.5 stub and it's just easier just to do that. Now this ink needs a little bit of shaking around because it's a, uh, a Diamine Shimmertastic ink. But uh, this is an Edison Collier and it's the blue steel and it's a uh, 1.5 millimeter stub and it is a steel nib and the ink is diamine uh, actually do an S here got ahead of myself there Shimmertastic now can you guess this ink because I find it's actually quite difficult to guess this ink um, but it is blue lightning and it's really coming out more like a green ink um, but you'll see maybe here you can see like some of that shimmer in in the uh, converter there so it is a blue ink but it just comes out more of a, blue, uh, a green ink in, or a teal ink uh, for me. Um, so again, it's not an ink that I'm really that sort of interested in, although I do like green inks, but I, I tend to not like inks that say that they're a colour and then turn out to be something different. So uh, here's a, another one here, and this is again an Edison, and this is a uh, narrower nib, 
and you'll see here that it will take a lot longer to try and do this ink swatch because of that. Maybe I should just look at doing some drops of ink on the page instead, but I, I like to do the, the uh, nib shading a little bit here. So this is the Edison and it's the Perlette and it's in the Lapis Blue. Uh, it is a medium nib and it is a still nib. But still, it can be quite a wet writer. Now, and these nibs tend to be quite also um, uh, consistent in, in how they write. Now, the ink in here I have is just simply Lamy Blue. So, again, it's it's a nice ink. Uh, I've been using Lamy Blue a lot more recently, and it's just an ink that I've liked a lot more lately. So, I think we'll, we'll just go through the inks here. So, and the pens. So, we have the Visconti Opera Master, and this is the clear demo in a medium nib, 23 cap palladium, and it's inked up with Pilot of Washizuku Uyaki. We have the Visconti Opera Master, and a, this is the Corvina in a 1.3 millimeter stub, 23 cap palladium nib, inked up with Visconti Bordeaux. We have another Visconti Opera Master, and this is the Stardust. And this is actually a bit wetter. You can see that they are both 1.3 millimeter palladium, 23 cap palladium nibs. However, this one actually tends to write a lot wider than the other one. Again, it's inked up with Visconti Bordeaux. I have a Visconti Ducati Palazzo di Sassuolo in a medium 18 karat gold nib, and that's inked up with Sailor Gentle Apricot. We have a Mont Blanc Le Grand 146 in a double broad 18 karat gold nib, inked up with Lamy Blue. And you can see the difference here between, if I just move this up a little bit, these two, uh, they're both Lamy Blue, but you can see the difference in, in the color, um, how the nib actually writes. And then we have the Pelican M800 Renaissance Brown in a broad 18 karat gold nib inked up with Akamon SBRE Brown. We have the Leonardo, and this is the Officina Italiana Momento Zero Positano Blue with a blue steel nib. And this ink is still trying to dry. Um, that's inked up with Robert Oster Blue Ice or Blue Water Ice. We have an Edison Collier Persimmon Swirl in a medium steel nib inked up with Jehaban Orange Indian. An Edison Collier Blue Steel 1.5mm stub nib, steel nib. And this is inked up with Diamine Shimatastic Blue Lightning, which is really coming out, for me in this nib, more green than blue. Um, and then we have the Edison Perlette Lapis Blue in a medium steel nib. And that's inked up with Lamy Blue. So there you have it. That's my currently inked for the 24th of June 2019. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.